stem and leaf plots day one. Um, this is goes along with lesson three, so you should have your lesson three notes out. Also, it's in your volume B of your textbook on page 194 if you want to follow along with the online textbook. Page 194, volume B. The data below show the test scores for one student during a semester. Display the data in a stem and leaf plot. Well, stem and leaf plots can be used to organize data values as they are collected. They are commonly used to collect large amounts of data for analyzing. Some examples of data include scores in sporting events, temperatures, rainfall over a period of time, classroom test scores, heights and weights of students. So usually they are used for large amounts of data. Well, we're not going to make large amounts of data stem and leaf plots. So ours are um, unlike what you would see in the real world, but we're getting the idea of it making a similar or smaller version of a stem and leaf plot. So, um, so they wanted us to put this information of these test scores during the semester in a stem and leaf plot. Well, the first thing you have to do, step one, identify the least and the greatest. Well, the least value is 23 and the greatest is 78. So I know my stems, which are the larger place values, the stems, they are the larger place values and sometimes there are a couple place values. For instance, if the number is in the thousands, the stem would be the thousands, hundreds, and the tens and the leaf would only be the least place value. So the stems are the larger place values and the leaf, the leaf part is only one single place value, the least place value. Could be the ones place, it could be if, the, if the numbers are in decimals like four and five tenths, then it would be the five tenths the least place value, and it's only one place value, is a leaf. So the very last digit that you see in a number is the leaf, and the digits prior to that, to the left of that, those are the stems. Since these numbers are in the tens, 23 to 78, the stems will be the 2 to 7, 20s, 30s, 40s, 50s, 60s, 70s, and the leaf will be the um, corresponding digit that goes along the ones place that goes along with the, the leaf. Order the leaves from least to greatest if necessary. Yes, two, three, four, five, six, seven. Write a key and a title, step four. So that's important that you have a key and a title for that. The key and the title. So the test scores in a semester. So we have two line three, which is what this says. Two line three represents a score of 23. So 2 and 3 makes 23, the score of 23. There were no scores in the 30s. And this caution, caution, caution over here says, the stems in a stem and leaf plot are listed in order without gaps. So even though there are no data values from 30 to 39, you need to include 3 as a stem. It just has no leaves, as you can see here. You cannot skip it. So the 3 has to be there. 43, so this would be 43, 45, 50, 63, 69, 78. So that's how you would read that stem and leaf plot. Those are all the numbers that were in the list. And then the key, you always, you know, and I usually try to make this line a little bit longer so it doesn't look like a one. Two, line three represents a score of 23. And it's a score. If you if it was inches of rain, you would say 23 inches of rain. If it was pounds of a pumpkin, you would say 8.2 pounds of a pumpkin. So um, you have to put the label in the key. So let's make one of these. Display the data using a stem and leaf plot. Indicate the range and median of each set of data. Well, you need the range so you know what the leaves have to go from this to this. The range is a good idea anyway. The median, we're going to practice how to find the median on a stem and leaf plot because the numbers are in order. They just look different in order. So the mass is in pounds of some watermelons. So first thing I need to do is find 
my range, my highest number is uh, 92 and my lowest number is 60. So 92 minus 60, my range is 32. So my stem and leaves, oh, my stem and leaf plot looks like this. So my stems are 60s, 70s, 80s, and 90s. Now I'm going to look for my stems or my numbers that have 60, um, 6 in the tens place. So I have a 60, a 65, and a 63. And you have to put these in order from least to greatest, left to right. So 60, no commas. 63, leave a space, space, 65. No commas. No commas on a stem and leaf plot. 70s, I have 75 and 78. 75, 78, no commas. 80s, I have 82 and 88. So 82, uh, no commas, 88. 90s, I have 90, 92, and 91. So 90, 91 and 92. And I don't have a lot of space here for a title and a key. So I'm going to put my title over here and this is Watermelon Pounds. Watermelon. Oh, it's the mass of the watermelons in pounds. Okay, Watermelon Pounds. That's good. And my key, usually you take the first stem and the first leaf or the last stem and the last leaf. And this time I'm going to take the last. I'm going to say 9 line 2 equals 92 pounds. It's not 9 and 2 tenths, it's 92 pounds. So I've got my key on there and they were, how many, I better make sure I have all my leaves on there. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10. So there are 10 watermelons. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10. So I was counting all of my leaves to make sure I have 10 numbers in my stem and leaf plot. So I've found the range. I made my stem and leaf plot. It's got a title and a key. And I also have to find the median. There are 10 watermelons. They are in numerical order right now. 60, 63, 65, 75, 78, 82, 88, 90, 91, and 92. If I put those, and they are in order, I can read that stem and leaf plot that way. There are 10 of them. So the fifth uh, in the middle, the two median, middle, would be my fifth leaf. One, two, three, four, five. From that end would be 78. From the upper end going backwards, 92, 91, 90, that's three, four, five. Go backwards, so 88, then 82. So my median is between 78 and 82. Add those together and divide by 2 or figure out what's exactly halfway between them is 80. So my median is 80 pounds. LBS. 80 pounds is the median. Um, display the data again in a stem and leaf. Oh, here's one that has tenths. So this is a good one that has decimals, which is why we don't put commas on a stem and leaf plot, because we don't want them to look like decimals. Um, the lengths in feet of some snakes. So snakes, I'm going to put my title first so I make sure I have enough room. Lengths. And then it's measured in feet. So you should always put units on a graph. This is a graph. Stem, leaf. So I have my range would be 13 and 2 tenths, my highest, minus my lowest, which is 9 and 8 tenths. So my range would be 3 and 4 tenths. So the that's my range. I'm going to write the word range next to it. 
So I need to have stems of 9, 10, 11, 12, and 13. 9, 10, 11, 12, and 13. Now I'm not going to put the decimal points in front of my leaf. I'm going to put the decimal point in my label of my key. You'll see that in just a moment. So things like money and things that have tenths and hundredths, the decimals go in the key, not in the actual stem and leaf plot. So in the nines, I have nine and eight tenths and nine and nine tenths. So eight and nine, skip a space, no commas. In the tens, I have 10 and 3 tenths, 10 and 9 tenths, and 10 and 6 tenths. So 3 tenths, 6 tenths, and 9 tenths. Do space, don't squish them. 11s, I have 11 and 3 tenths, and 11 and 8 tenths. So 3 and 8. In the 12s, I have only, uh, oh no, I have two, 12 and 5 tenths and 12 and 1 tenth. Almost missed that. And then 13 and 2 tenths only has one. My key, I could put it down at the bottom or off to the side here. 9 line 8 equals 9 and 8 tenths feet. So there's my label. And it's showing me that these are decimals, not 98 and 99 and 103, 10 and 3 tenths. There's a decimal in between these. So um, I have my stem and leaf plot. I found my range. Now I've got to find my median. Again, I'm going to use the leaves and count the lengths in, oh, I better make sure I have all my leaves on there. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10. Yes. And all of my leaves, all of my numbers are in my data. Now I'm going to find my median. So 10 items. 1, 2, oh, I don't want to make marks on there and make it look like decimals. 3, 4, 5. So 10 and 9 tenths is one of them. From the lower end, 13 and 2 tenths, 12 and 5 tenths, 12 and 1 tenth, 3. 11 and 8 tenths makes the fourth one. 11 and 3 tenths is the fifth one from that end. <coughs> so when I add them up and divide by 2, I get 22 and 2 tenths. Dividing by 2 would give me 11 and 1 tenth feet. That's the median. So I'm going to label that median. So how to make a stem and leaf plot. Next question, next slide. Explain why a stem and leaf plot is not suitable, not suitable for the following set of data. Give specific reasons. The average SAT scores for some students are. Okay, so I have very big numbers here and I'm gonna find my range, which is my highest minus my lowest. And I think 1623 is the highest. And 1276 is the lowest. 1276. So my range is 347 numbers. Well, that's too big. That's not the purpose of a stem and leaf pot, is to have 347 stems, range of numbers. That there would be, the stems would be too many. There would be too many stems. Too many stems. And many of them would not have any leaves. It would be useless to do this. Too many stems, many with not, many with no leaves. So it's not going to be a good picture. So for instance, you would have 127 for 1,276, and then you'd have a leaf of 128. Are there anything in the 1,280s? No. 1,290s? No. You would have to go all the way up to 1,345, up to 134. 1,300, 1, 1, 1,300s. Is there anything? You know, so you'd have all these stems that wouldn't have a leaf in them. 
And then, then finally you would get to 1,345, and then you would finally have a leap. So all of these would be blank. So that's not practical. That's not a good choice. Um, this range is too large. There's too many numbers in this set of data. So it is not, um, and you only, it, it, they didn't give you enough data here either. There's not enough data points. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. Remember, stem and leaf plots are for lots of data. Eight things, not enough also. Too many stems, many with no leaves, and not enough data is a reason why this would not be a good thing to make into a stem and leaf plot. Use the data in the table to answer the following. So the table shows the height in centimeters of a group of students. Draw a stem and leaf plot. So we have several students here. What is the mean? What is the mode? What is the median? Compare the mean, median, and mode of this set of data. Okay, we're going to find a mean, median, and mode on a stem and leaf plot. These numbers are going to go in numerical order. So uh, we can find the median. The mean, we're going to have to add them all up and divide by how many. The mode, we'll see that a couple of them may appear more than the others. So draw the stem and leaf plot. So we have um, our range is always the first thing that we should do here. Um, they range from the 137 to 159, so my range is 22. So that's okay, that's a small enough range that I can put in a stem and leaf plot. So 137, so my stem, leaf, 13's for the 130's, 14's, and 15's. Okay, so 137, 138, 139. Yes, I've already made this, so I can go through a little bit more quickly. So just follow me, 140, 141, 142, 143, two 144s, 145, 146, 147, two 148s, and a 149. Ooh, lots of 140s. 150. 151, 152, 153, and 159. So my key here could say, one five line nine, you could pick any one of them. I could pick 143 if I wanted to and do one four line three equals a score of 159 Oh, no, a height of 159 centimeters. So 159 centimeters. This is height. So um, oh, I'm going to put the title up here. Height of students. That's the title that goes with this graph here. Okay. So draw a stem and leaf plot. I've done that. I have a key and a title on it. What is the mean height of the students? Well, if I add up all of the stems and all of the leaves, if I add all of those numbers up, and there's a lot of them, there's 20, I'm going to get a sum of 2,916, whoops, not 61, 2,916 divided by 20 gives me a mean of 145 and 8 tenths centimeters. That's the mean height of the students. This is in centimeters, by the way. What is the mode? Well, is there a number that appears more than the others? Yes, I did say 144 twice and 148 twice. There are two of them, two modes. What is the median? So 20 numbers. So 10 from either direction. 137, 38, 39, 40, 41, 42, 43, 44, uh, 44, 45. So this 145, that makes 10. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10. And 10 from the going backwards, 159, 153, 152, 151, 150, 
149, 148, 148, 147, 146. That makes 10 from that direction. So my median is halfway between 145 and 146, which is 145 and a half centimeters. That's the median. Compare the mean, median, and mode of this set of data. So the mean, median, and mode of this set of data. Um, the mean and the median are about the same, right? 145 and a half and 145 and 8 tenths. The mean and median are very close. One forty-five and eight tenths centimeters, and one forty-five and five tenths centimeters. Very close, only off by three tenths. And the modes are about the same too. One forty-four and one forty-eight. They're very close. These these mean and median are within the modes. They're in the middle within the modes. They're in the middle of 144 and 148. They're very close. All of this data is very close. Probably very good data that was collected here. Back to back stem and leaf plots. So now I have information that goes like a normal stem and leaf plot, team B, from left to right. And team A, you have to read from right to left. So 6, 7 means 67. 6, 8 means 68, 6, 8 means 68, 6, 9 means 69. The stem and leaf plot shows the height in inches of players on two football teams. So we have kids that are in the 60s and 70 inches tall. Team A, and yes, you make the key look exactly left to right as it does here. 7, line 6, it's talking about this 7, line 6 means 67, because team A, you read right to left. Team B is like a normal side of a stem and leaf plot. Six line eight represents 68 inches. How many players are on each team? Well, if you count the leaves, there are 11 on each team. What is the median height for each team? Okay, team B, one, two, three, four, five, six, the sixth number, one, two, three, four, five, six. The sixth number from either end. So team B is 71. Uh, one, two, three, four, five, six. One, two, three, four, five, six. So the sixth number from either end that way, 73, 72, 71, 71, 70, 70. Sixth number would be 70. So team A, team A's median height is Counting six from either end, 70 inches. Team B, 71. So their medians are very close. What is the mean height for each team? Team A, if you add them all up, you get 769 divided by 11, which gives you a mean height of 69 and 90 hundredths repetent inches. And team B is 773 when you add it all together, divided by those 11 people, is 70 and 27 hundredths. Dividing by 11 gives you a repeating decimal inches. So team B is a little bit taller. On average, which team has taller players? Team B. Their mean is just a little bit higher than 69 and 90 hundredths repetent. Team B is just a tiny bit taller. The waiting time in minutes at a train station for two different routes on a particular day are recorded in the stem and leaf plot. Compare the median and mean. Compare the waiting time for the two different routes. So again, reading the stem, route A, zero, eight, line zero really means eight trips. Zero line one means 10 trips. You have to read it backwards from right to left, root A. Root B, you re read from left to right. 
So compare the median and the mean. The team A, so I'm going to do root A over here and root B over here. So root A's mean. You add all of these up, I got 559 divided by 20 gives me 27 and 95 hundredths um, trips in minutes. So this is minutes. Their median, since there are 20 of them, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10 in both directions, is between 26 and 28, which is 27 minutes. So their median is 27 minutes. Root B. So root B, adding them all up, you get 446 total minutes divided by 15 trips only, gives you 29 and 73 hundredths minutes. So root B tends to be a little bit longer, and their median, it's between since there's only 15, count the eighth number, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8. It's 28, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 8 from either direction. You get 28 minutes is the median. So, both things are higher for team or for root B. Root B takes a little bit longer. Compare the median and the mean. Compare the waiting time for the two different routes. Both the mean and the median for route A are less, so passengers are more likely to have a shorter waiting time if they take route A. Route B, mean and median are longer, longer waiting time. So it equals a longer waiting time. So you should travel on the B, on the A route. Longer waiting time. That's what it looks like to me. A survey was conducted to find out the number of hours per week 15-year-old students and 18-year-old students spend on the internet. The results of the survey are shown in the stem and leaf plot. Compare the mean and the median for the two groups. Um, I'm going to leave this one to go over in class. I think we've done enough for today looking at stem and leaf plots back to back. We'll talk about this example. So we'll leave this one to go over in class. So that's it for today.